that is more significant. You can celebrate your birthday every year and so go to help fire. But when you remember the month that God saved your soul, then every year you will recall what God did for you, how He saved your life, how He saved you from destruction, how He brought you out. So it's a very important month for your life. And it says to keep the Passover. What does it mean to keep the Passover? Well, I'm sure most of us have a, an inkling, an idea of what the Passover represents. What is the Passover? Well, let's look at the word itself. It says pass over. Pass over. That means something passed over another thing, right? So where was the Passover? You know God instructed and gave the Passover when they left Egypt. After being slave for over 400 years, God told them to take his pointless lamb without any spots and kill that lamb and apply that, the blood of that lamb on the doorposts and the sides of the entrance to the houses. And now, that night, the angel of death went throughout Egypt and slew all the firstborn of all the Egyptians and all the animals in Egypt. But whichever house did not have that blood, the angel of death entered and killed the firstborn. So when we say pass over, we mean death pass over you. So right now in your own life, before the end of this year, death will pass away. Amen. Sickness will pass away. Amen. Life will pass away. Amen. Poverty will pass away. Amen. And the new year as well. So God wants you to remember that pass over when we were saved. From Satan. You know, they were saved from the hand of Pharaoh. Pharaoh represents Satan. They were saved from the hands of Pharaoh through the death of the firstborn. It was after Pharaoh's firstborn died that he finally relented and allowed the children of Israel to believe and go and worship their God in Mount Sinai. <coughs> so, all these things that have been pointed to our Lord Jesus Christ coming. As the spotless lamb of God that was slain from the foundation of the world to save you and I. Remember the uh, John, the apostle, looked at him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. He was that lamb that was slain, and his blood was always applied on our lives before you and I be redeemed from the hands of Satan. Before you have to be in this church, he took the death of the firstborn of God and of Jesus Christ. It was the penance. That blood was what Satan took as penance to set you and I free so that we can be here worshiping him. So God wants us to remember that day because if we remember that day, we would not begin to mess up and sin again, knowing the high price that cost God to set us free. So therefore, that should sacrifice. And let's go to 1 Corinthians 5, 7 and 8. 1 Corinthians 5, 7 and 8. And Hebrews 11, 28. 1 Corinthians 5, 7 and 8. Hebrews 11, 28. Anybody can read it? 1 Corinthians 5, 7 and 8. And Hebrews 11, 28.
and level, he was level 20 in modern land. And he says, through faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. So it was the Passover, the blood of the Lamb, that saved from Israel from the death angel as it passed through Egypt. Any house that did not have the blood, that angel entered and killed the firstborn. So the question is this Do you have the blood on your doorposts? Do you have the blood on your forehead? Do you have the blood on your car? When you are going out on the road and they plant a terrible accident on the road and you are coming and they see the blood, that accident will affect you. But if the blood is on your car, on your forehead, you will be in your accident. So, you must ask yourself, do I have a on my forehead? Do I have this on my home? Do I have this on my car? Because without that blood, you are open to that angel of death. The man will be our portion. So, therefore, you shall sacrifice the pastor of the Lord thy God on the throne of the hand in the place which the Lord shall choose to place it in there. In other words, you will not just go anywhere. Because that Passover is a holy sacrifice. You know, what they ate, they killed the lamb, and they roasted the lamb, and they ate the lamb whilst standing. Because as soon as they finished the meal, they really left Egypt. I'm not talking about that. Can you see your bite somewhere? And it says, Thou shalt eat no leavened bread with this. You know, when they eat that, uh, Passover lamb, there's a no leavened bread. Seven days you shall eat some leavened bread. There will even the bread of affliction. Let's stop there. You see, the bread of affliction. Bread without leaven. What is leaven? Leaven is yeast. You know, now when you buy bread, it's very soft, right? Because they put yeast in it. And the yeast got fermented and it produced gas, and the gas separated the dough. And that's why it's soft and succulent. So everybody wants to eat fresh bread, especially. I remember when I was young in high school, we used to go out to the river, I was making very close to my school. And in the night, we'd go there and get fresh bread bread. But the Lord says, this bread that we eat for seven days will not have any yeast in it. So if you ever make bread without yeast, oh wow. That bread will be like a biscuit. Very, very hard. Very, very hard. That's why it's called the bread of affliction. Because you cannot enjoy it. It's not hard, it's, it's not soft. And something like normal bread is hard. And they had to eat that for seven days. Even the Bible describes the bread of affliction. For seven days, they will not eat no more bread. Why? So you came out of the land of Egypt in haste. And you may remember the day when you came forth out of the land of Egypt for all the days of your life. So when they ate that bread, they remember their sufferings. How they suffered in slavery for over 400 years. It means they remember the whole purpose of this feast was for us to remember where we were before God saved us. Because many people. They forget. After they are saved, they begin to do all kinds of things. They begin to mess up. And, you know, they truly really forget the price that was paid for them. If you switch up some of the eyes, switch up all the eyes. Okay. Anyway. So, also, the bread of affliction represents the life of Christ. You remember, he was the bread of life. And he had no sin in him. So if you look at the bread of love, Jesus, he will tell you the kind of life Christ had. His life was nothing to write about. It was one of affliction, of pain, of sorrows. And he was acquainted with grief and he carried our sorrows. That's the kind of life he read, he led. In fact, I would say that when we see him, we shall not know him. 
if you were a liar at the time Jesus Christ was alive, you would not have thought anything about him. You would not have thought he was the Son of God, for sure, because there's nothing spectacular or special about him that would make you think, oh, this would be the Son of God. No, no, no. So for seven days, they were expected not to eat that bread, and not to eat bread with yeast in it, to remember their sufferings. And there shall no living bread seem the same with thee. All in all your for seven days, neither shall there be anything of the flesh which is sacrificed the first day at the evening of the middle of the night till the morning. What is trying to say there? In other words, that meat that we eat, but it wasn't allowed to remain till the morning. They had to eat it in haste. And they also had to roast it. Why? Because the roasting of the meat symbolizes the sufferings of our Lord Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary. Roasting means you apply fire, right? The fire to the meat. So that meat you're eating is actually the blood, the body of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, all this speaks to us having communion. You know, when we take communion, what do you do with this church? Uh, we're going to we do it at the time of Easter. You are taking the body. And the blood of Christ. So when you eat it, it's a very holy offering. That's why it says you must take it in a designated place. You can't just do it anywhere. It's a holy offering you're taking, and they have to take everything that they want. They don't lay it. Why? The body of Jesus Christ did not lay it in the morning on the cross. Remember? They went and tried to break the legs of the of the uh, of the other thieves. But when they go to our Lord Jesus Christ, he had already died. And said, Oh, he's already dead. So he was born in blood to die on the cross. It was taken down and put in the grave. So all this thing really speaks to what happened to our Lord Jesus Christ. How he came and died. How he was sacrificed. How he was sacrificed and paid for my sins and your sins. So you may not sacrifice the pastor with any of your gates. May the Lord that God gives you now. So go to the holy place. It's a holy offering. It's a holy offering. It's a very serious meal. And the Jews do this at the time of Passover. It's a very solemn occasion because they remember the sufferings. But the place the Lord of God shall choose to place his name in, there's, there shall you sacrifice the Passover at the evening at the going down of the sun, the season that thou came forth from Egypt. So they have to do this feast every year to remind them of their sufferings, how God delivered them through the blood of the Lamb. So that they will not forget and become proud and strong headed. You and I also, it's not going to take communion. The same thing that happens to us. And God says, do this in remembrance of the first Corinthians 10. So what they're describing here is really the act of communion. First Corinthians 10. First Corinthians 10 and read it. Yes. First Corinthians 10. Taken by being as scapegoats 
as sacrifice, we were left set free from the punishment due to us. You and I were condemned to die, but because of our sins, the Bible says, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. So, Jesus Christ has been with his life for you and I to be set free from the punishment and penalty of sin, which is death. So, he shall roast it and eat it in the place where the Lord will watch and choose. Let's go to Exodus 12, verse 8. Exodus 12, verse 8.
So when you take communion, you must, it's a holy offering, that is in the body and the blood of Christ. And you're remembering what he did for you when he saved you. God wants us to remember that sacrifice. So we don't go astray. And, uh, you know, we don't start misbehaving. As long as we're not at all. We were in bondage for so many years to sin. So that was taking us over the place. I still didn't remember the day I was born again, for sure. I remember that. Several years ago, in England, whilst I was uh, working there, you know, I was advised with a full business in this college. And uh, this nurse who was working with me at the school had already met me several times. And I gave her excuses. I kept on giving her excuses. And she didn't remember that. She kept on inviting me and inviting me. One day I said, okay, I have to get this nurse on my back. I'll go for this meeting and that's it. Even though I was a Christian already at that stage, of course I was going to church, just like many Christians of today. And lo and behold, I went to that. It wasn't a church, it was held in a hall. It was called the uh, Full Gospel Business Men's Fellowship, that's what we call the organization. And the, the speaker, you know, give a, of course, word of testimony, and he invited people to come forward. I don't know how I was in front of today. I don't know, but I found myself in front and the next day I knew I was on the floor. And that day I knew I was born again, even though I've been in prison for years. Why? Because when I got up, I was a different person. It was a huge weight had been lifted up off me. I felt so light. And I could not sing in a praise of God. All night long. Who's it? That was like a bolt of electricity charging through my body. It was so powerful. And from that day on, my life took a complete turnaround. So if you don't have an experience, then maybe you're not truly born again. Because if you're truly born again, you will see a dramatic change in your life. As I said, I was already a Christian. As I said, I was going to church. I was already a Christian. For several years from now, but the day I was born again, I knew that I was born again. So, may you have an experience of having my kids. I'm going to go to John chapter 4 and verse 26. I'm going to start speaking. Said, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. What do you mean by that? My meat. That is his food, his sustenance. What keeps him alive is to do the will of him that sent him, and this is that, his father, God the Father, and to finish that work. Job 23 verse 12. Look of Job 23 verse 12. So, what is your means in your life today? What is your purpose in life? Is it to amass as much wealth as you can, to have as many women or men, or to be famous or successful? Or is it to do the will of God? You open me, that's true. What is your miss? It's what you read. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I have not departed from the commandments of his lips. Yes. I have treasured the words of his mouth yes. more than my necessary food. See, the treasure of his mouth more than my food. See, many of us, we cannot do that eating. But when Satan tempted Jesus Christ, the better way to say, said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of the Father. Many of you live by bread alone. Mm -hmm. But there are some people in this time who live by the word of God, even though they do not eat food. They are spiritually fed because the word of God, this is the bread of life, is feeding them. How do you think Moses fasted for 40 days and 40 nights without eating food twice? Do you think that's possible? Well, he did it. How do you think that Jesus Christ fasted for 40 days? Because that word of God in them was feeding them. And they didn't eat physical food. But Moses said, eh, that's I will die. Some people would have told the father, eh, I will die. He said, Joe, you can't die. He said, oh, no, if I fast, I'm going to die. No, no, he said, Lam, you won't die. You won't die. If I have a terrible headache, but you won't die. You see? He said, my food, my purpose in life is to do the will of him that sent me. What is the will?
middle of man. That's what the Christians have to do. What is the purpose of man? Many people don't know why they're here. They say, why am I on this earth? They don't even know. There are millions of people like that. So they don't know why I'm on the earth. So if you don't have a reason to live, then you know, society is very attractive to you. You don't know your purpose. I guess the level is to change. Because we need to know the truth. In case you don't know why you're on this path. Why were you born on this path? Ecclesiastes mm-hmm. 12 verse 13. Receive wages. What are the 
raise souls. That's the way you receive put your kingdom, your record in heaven. From so 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 days, you spoke to so 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 person, and because of you, what you said to him, he surrendered his life to Christ. Proverbs 11 18, 1 Corinthians 3 8. And gathereth fruit into life eternal. That eternal, that fruit is the soul of men and women in heaven. That both he that souls and he that reaps may rejoice together. One, Proverbs 11 18. Oh, 
First of all, we want to thank God for this occasion. We will come back as salvation. How He saved us through the blood of the Lamb. How He paid His supreme price to redeem us from hell and death. We want to ask God to make us so witness, to open our mouth, to speak to the Gentiles, to the ignorant, who don't know Him, to bring them to the throne of Christ. I want to pray for the Lord to lay His hand on protection upon our lives as we approach the end of the year, that none of us will be found missing on the first day of the new year, that we shall all enter the new year happy and joyful in His presence. Pray that. Jesus Christ, Holy Michael, the Lord that has us by fire, we thank you for this privilege to hear your word today. We thank you for the sins on our hearts. We thank you for salvation. How you sent your son to die a gruesome death and pay the penalty of my sins in the cross of life. I thank you for the free gift of salvation. Oh Lord, I'm not praying. Make me a